an international uh, community of priests um, that started just 28 years ago in Rome with just 12 members. And now, uh, 28 uh, years later, we have over 450 members coming from 31 countries. And we um, have a specialty, and our, our specific mission is to preserve the, the, the liturgy and the way, the, the ancient um, way that Catholics uh, have traditionally worshipped. And part of that is through uh, the Gregorian chant and sacred music that you hear on this album. Gregorian chant is the musical patrimony of the Roman Church, at least, and um, it has its um, origins really lost in history. Uh, there's Byzantine Eastern influences in some of the melodies, but also it was just the development of musical styles throughout uh, the first thousand years, you could say, and it became very standardized uh, at the end of the first, uh, first millennia, millennium. And so this is something that... Um, we are very much receiving it in terms of a, a tradition. Uh, Gregorian chant specifically itself as a musical style, it's unison singing. It's a one vocal line where either um, a small group or a large group, in our case, uh, for their album, uh, come together and sing one vocal line regardless of your uh, vocal, vocal quality. Everyone has to sing the same notes uh, at the same pitch at the same time. There have been several chant albums that have come out over the past several years, and I think in part it speaks to uh, perhaps a spiritual need for people that enjoy that music, um, but not necessarily requiems, and I'm wondering why you chose to record the requiem, and maybe even just tell us, you know, what the requiem is and what it means to you. The requiem album, it's uh, something that we have very personal to us, it's very dear to us, uh, because it is dealing with death, uh, funerals, etc. And um, we sing this music at least once a month in our training facility, our seminary in Nebraska. And also the fact is, we thought if we're introducing Gregorian chant to the wider public, why not capture something that they would never perhaps hear in other settings? Uh, we're more familiar with Mozart, Fauré, Verdi's uh, Requiem, but we wanted to give them the source uh, present the source, uh, the, the music, and even the text uh, to the wider public. And so we thought that this would also, because it's such a universal concept of death and the human experience that goes along with it, with mourning, the melancholy, the sadness, but also sense of peace, joy. Uh, requiem itself, the word in Latin means rest. So we understand uh, this notion of an eternal rest. This is what we do after life. And so we wanted to convey that in this album. Now, there's more than just Gregorian chant in this album, right? That's right. The, the music by other composers as well? Well, we just chose two selections, um, Palestrina, who is a medieval composer, and then Martini, which you could say is more of a later composer, uh, bridging the gap between the Gregorian melodies, which are very ancient. Again, the authors themselves, the composers, are lost in time. But we wanted to, in a, in a certain way, bridge the gap very briefly to the Gregorian chant source all the way to the modern composers that most people are more familiar with. And so uh, if people say Requiem, they might think Mozart. Well, Mozart was the first one to compose a Requiem, but that's not the case. Obviously, the Gregorian chant predated him by centuries. And then you have other composers that would take uh, different parts of the Requiem Mass and make a musical setting. I assume this is the kind of music that you live with every day, maybe not necessarily a requiem, uh, but the Gregorian chant and the chant style of music. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your daily experience with this music, what you use it for? Right. So, Brad, um, throughout our, our training um, to, to become priests, the seven, year, seven years at our seminary in Nebraska, 
four times each day we gather together in the chapel um, and we we pray to God singing the psalms in the same style of singing the, the this Gregorian chant. And so it becomes a very much a part of who we are. And we become so used to singing together in this ancient and beautiful way. Um, and it uh, depends on the different feast day or the different occasion, religious celebration. We, uh, we sing uh, maybe different varieties. But this requiem is, is whenever someone dies uh, for the funeral, um, this is what we sing without pretty much without variation. And so that's why we wanted to, from track one to track 20, um, give, give you a glimpse of, of what is traditionally the way that we um, the way that we bury our dead. And we mourn, but yet we're also uh, hopeful because God is merciful. Now, Father Huang, you said something really interesting in uh, the video that I watched, and I'd, it seems to be a real simple thing, but I'd never thought of it before when you talked about how uh, the texts... Uh, are not enough, that they actually have to be sung, that you you feel the urge to sing these texts. Very much so, because singing is how we all express our emotions, uh, either sadness, joy, and the full range of things. And so, because if we're dealing with God expressing our relationship with him, we want to express it in song. Uh, When you fall in love, obviously you want to sing. And so this is the, the song of those who love. Now, I found it interesting that you said you were an opera singer. That's right, yeah. That you came from that tradition. Can you tell us a little bit about your uh, interest in opera? So I was first introduced to opera when I was around 13, 14 years old. My father was uh, had some friends who were professional singers, and they used to ask me to play the piano, accompany them while they were doing some uh, art song or arias and whatnot. And so I was around 14, 15, started just imitating the sounds, and I started studying right there, uh, vocal production. And then I made my audition into university in, with an opera major and then went on from there into the professional scene before I went to seminary. Interesting. Can I ask you about your path to the priesthood and how how you went from opera to uh, where you are now? Well, um, when I was starting out my my professional career, uh, after my my debut, I was in marriage of Figaro, and I went back to my university professor say, well, it was a wonderful experience in front of a large auditorium, thousands of people there, got paid nicely and had a great experience. I think I want to be a priest. And he just said, well, you're young enough, go do what you want. Hmm. Um, I made my application while I was still under contract, and I got my acceptance letter as we were doing uh, AIDA. And uh, so I just had to plan out my time, finish the contracts that I had already signed, and then go off to the seminary. And then uh, a wonderful experience that I had was, as I was doing AIDA, the director of the production had heard that they were doing um, uh, The King and I, and they were looking for an Asian baritone. Hmm. And I'm from Canada, and at the time, there was myself and another fellow who we were the only two Asian baritones in Canada. And so that's why the director <laughs> recommended me. Um, and so I called up the the company to see what they wanted because I was recommended. And um, it would have been during the summer, so that would have been great with the staging, the rehearsals, and the production time, except the performances would have gone one week into my uh, date to arrive at the seminary. So I decided to not accept... Well, I didn't even audition for the production, but I just said, um, thank you very much, but I won't be... Uh, following up on this right. because I didn't want to uh, delay things. Well, life is a series of choices, and obviously you were presented with a, a reaffirmation of the choice that you made. That's right. That's right. Now, uh, Father Akers, explain to me your role in this project. You were a music director or you were conducting the group? That's right. So each one of us, there's 12 of us priests that sing on this album, and we all have um, an extensive experience singing Gregorian chant in seminary and also as priests. And so um, really a- any one of us could have directed it, but um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the youngest one, the most recently out of seminary, and so um, I, I was very happy to help coordinate this, but it was very helpful to have the assistance of a few other priests uh, that were singing on the album who also were directors of music during their seminary time, like Father Huang.
what is your hope for this album? What would you hope that, that people would get from it? I just hope that they um, will just have their, maybe perhaps their first experience with a Gregorian chant, listen to it, and then take it into their own context. Uh, regardless of whether they say something that they'll listen to it often, but they'll at least appreciate what it is. It stands on its own two feet. It's a monument of uh, at least the, the, the Western tradition of musical development. And so not only is it something that we do uh, very frequently today, but it's also uh, a part of the heritage, uh, the, the patrimony of, of Western culture. And my hope is that um, it will help uh, facilitate people uh, to have peace in their life and even bring them uh, to God. Because it, as Father Huang has mentioned, it's not for us, it's not a performance. It's a prayer. And um, especially if they're able to uh, read the liner notes and read the translations um, uh, while they're listening to this, I think it's, it's a, it'll be a meaningful experience for them. Well, thanks to you both, Father uh, Gary Kwong and Father Zachary Akers. The title of the CD is Requiem from the Fraternity. And uh, congratulations on this uh, beautiful recording. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Mm-hmm. 